Hello and welcome back to the Red Path. Today we're doing another chill game learn and we're going to talk about what it means to be a good opponent. Okay, so welcome back to the Red Path. Um, as you've already noticed, uh, we're doing a chill game learn, and I want to talk about what it means to be a good opponent. Um, this is obviously something that's actually incredibly important. Um, every game of 40k is going to have at least two players, um, and you are going to be one of them. I'm going to be one of them. Um, and something that you know is kind of a common thing, um, whether you're online or maybe talking with your friends or something, is um, everyone's played against a bad opponent, right? Or we've heard stories about playing against a bad opponent and what makes a bad opponent um, there's a whole bunch of things you know and um, I want to go through essentially some of them um, and how we can very easily avoid being a bad opponent being a that guy being a poor sports person wh whatever right um, because at the end of the day this is a game and we all take part in it for fun for enjoyment, to relax, to chill out, whatever. This this is not our job, or for most of us anyway, this is not our job. This is this is hobby. This is leisure time. This is how we unwind and de-stress and decompress. Um, so ultimately, if you walk away from the table and you didn't have fun, something went wrong. Um, it could be something with you. Could be something with your opponent. You know, sometimes you have a bad day, or your opponent may have had a bad day. That's going to happen. But if we can reduce that by, you know, applying some things to ourselves, something I'm working very hard on, um, because I'm sure I've not always been a good opponent. Um, hopefully, you know, not for at least some of the reasons. But um, you know, I'm I'm I've certainly been tilted. I've certainly blamed the dice. I've certainly um, got upset. In a non meme way, if anyone watched um, the bat rep I did um, yesterday for me, but I'm not sure when I'm posting this, uh, versus uh, Tanya and her Imperial Guard, um, I lost my shit. But it was, you know, it was for a good cause. I, I knew what I was doing. I was kind of playing up the whole World Eater theme a little bit, but I was genuinely upset when Khan died. Oh my god. Oh! I'll never get over it. But, um,. So let, let's dive into it. I'm, I'm going to kind of break it down into three or four categories. Um, but the first one I want to talk about is be presentable. I think that's about the best word I could come up for with this. Um, it's kind of a bit of a catch-all, I guess. But ultimately, it starts with kind of like hygiene and appearance. Um, this is something that's been talked about to death, so I'm not going to go into it. But, you know, wear deodorant, um, have a shower or, or you know clean yourself thoroughly uh, wear clean clothes um if you're playing in a hot environment like right now i mean it's 74 degrees and it's one in the morning here um and i'm in a basement with no ac so i mean 74 is not bad but i mean it was in the 90s earlier um so it, it can get sweaty and you know i'm a big fella i swear it happens and you know if you're at most gaming stores or, uh, you know, if you're playing in a garage or something, you may not have AC. So, you know, maybe take a spare t-shirt or something as well. But definitely bring deodorant with you if you're going somewhere for more than a few hours. If you're going for multiple games, bring some deodorant. Take a trip to the restroom. Put it on. It's all good. Um, but also, beyond that, and, you know, wearing clean clothes and stuff like that, um, have your army be clear in what it is now i'm an advocate for having a painted army but i'm not going to push that because you know there are very good reasons why some people don't have a painted army so that that you know i prefer people do but it's not not the end of the game it's not the end of the world for me but what i do think is important is if you're using proxies and counts as and or alternative models and stuff uh, make them clear as to what they are essentially you know um, if you've got a model that's using the rules of a chain axe, don't have them modeled with a power fist or vice versa. Um, there are some exceptions like sometimes, you know, like a flamer and a melter gun, 
it's kind of okay as you know as long as you're consistent um but in general i i try and use models that are very representative of the rules that they're using um this is a bit of a gray area because like i said there are definitely exceptions to this but don't make a bad habit of it you know what i mean um of course if you're going to be doing major proxies or you want to test out a unit just just talk to your opponent beforehand preferably in a friendly game or a friend or a game with a friend not at a tournament you don't want to be testing stuff out at a tournament even an rtt really you, you should have what you're using or very close of course some situations like I, i'm running dual volkite contemptors right now and um i don't have contemptors because you can't buy uh, so i don't have volkite because you cannot buy volkite from forge world it has not been available for several months um uh, or if it has it's out of stock before i've been able to get it um and i'm not i may turn to designing a 3d print because that appears to be generally okay um but i'm not buying like a you know a recast or anything um i'm not judging you um i just think like because i want to go to big tournaments and stuff i don't want to run the risk of somehow being caught out in that um you know how you spend your money is up to you no no harm no foul but my personal choice is to is to use official stuff um and generally it's all gw in fact my usable army is all gw or forge world um it's, that's just me um but yeah um just check with the TO because I was using a C beams instead of Volkites because I can't get them. And TO said it was fine as long as I told my opponents, and I did. Um, and last thing in this category is always have your rules um, and, and books preferably available, um, you have like your codex or FAQ, because there's always this a janky thing that comes up, right? Um, you know, playing World Eaters, people aren't familiar with our rules, and I just want to be able to say, look, this is how Blood for the Blood God works, or no, Khan does always hit on a two regardless of whatever spell you've put on him or whatever else, right? Um, just have that. You, it just solves so many problems in a moment. In in two minutes, you can resolve it rather than just, you know, oh, I've got to bring it up on Battlescribe. Now, Battlescribe or the Warhammer app is great for quick reference for certain things, but, you know, if you're trying to find a very specific sentence, you cannot use Battlescribe because... There are several errors in it, and it's it's not an official thing. You can use it for, like, I'm checking the weapon skill, fine. You know what I mean. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, which is, a, a, you know, significant and important to being a good opponent, is being is, is your timeliness in general. Um, so this means for your game, show up on time or, you know, five minutes early. My granddad always used to tell me it's better to be five minutes early than five seconds late, and I try to apply that where possible I mean, i'm half an hour early for work every day even when i started work at 2 a.m i was there at 1 30 um it's just how i am um there's nothing worse for anyone than sitting there and you want to play you've you know you've set aside three hours out of your day and your opponent's like i'm not saying you know like if they're caught in traffic or something that's fine but they're just that person that's always late drives me crazy really does but um Try it if, you know, some people are like that, whatever. But, you know, if you schedule a time with someone, respect that time because that other person is giving you hours out of their day as well, okay? Um, and f to the same end, know your rules. Um, if it's like your first few games, this doesn't really apply. But, you know, if, if you've been playing consistently um, or you, you're trying out like a, a major new unit, read that data sheet back to front, uh, you know, ten times. Or, or know your army, especially if you're going to a tournament or, you know, an organized event of some sort. The last thing you want is to have to leaf through your codex or pull it up on the app because you, you don't know common things. I'm talking your weapon skill, ballistic skill, movement. No one expects you to know every leadership value because, you know, it, it that gets a bit ridiculous, it, you know, in armies with multiple tiers of, you know, units that you know maybe leadership nine eight and seven and stuff that that's fine know the common ones know your marines leadership and your um things that certainly if you're running squads of you know like five plus know the leadership values but in general you want your weapon skill ballistic skill move strength and toughness the common abilities that they have you know for me blood for the blood god and stuff like that know that stuff okay um you'll forget some things it happens like i every now and again i'll use um Wrathful Entreaty on my um, Dark Apostle, and I can never remember if it's plus one or plus two strength. 
or, or it, it may not even be a strength buff. That's how often I use it because it's always five up invol, minus one to hit, or um, re-roll uh, hits in the fight phase, depending on what I've put on them. So yeah, no, certainly no, I'd say 90% of your rules for your army that you're playing speeds up the game a huge amount. Um, and following on from that, know your dice sets. Like my squad of uh, five raptors, on the charge, 21 attacks. My squad of eight bikes, on the charge, oh God, 33 attacks, yeah. And it's 32 bolter shots, 33 attacks with chainsaws. You know, know these things. Now, obviously, if you've lost two or three, you have to sit there and do a quick bit of mental math. That's fine. But know the core ones. Just just know them. How many... If you're running, you know, berserkers you, you and you, you know, you've got a janky weapon on the champion, know your chain axes for, for your five or your eight or your ten berserkers. And also know that, okay, so um, I'm going into a T4 model with chain axes and chainsaws, right? I can roll the chain axes and chainsaws together because they're both wounded on threes or twos if you've played vets or something because of the strength five and strength six. Just roll them all together. That's just saved you, you know, X amount of seconds, which just makes the game better, right? So moving on, the next kind of topic, subtopic I want to talk about is sporting behavior. Commonly called sportsmanship, but I, I just, I think, I, you know what I'm about. So sporting behavior, being a good sports person, right? Um... This is a lot of things. This is often covered, you know, like the new ITC Code of Conduct rules goes into this a lot. Um, I believe the uh, Games Workshop, the AOS 3.0, actually has a page on this kind of stuff, um, like sort of personal conduct or interactions with your opponent. Um, never never touch your opponent's dice or models, okay? Um, I, I mean, obviously, with ex if they ask you to, that's a different story. Certainly in the times of COVID, but going forward, I mean, I, I'm hoping we've, as a as a as a species, learnt a little bit about personal space and, you know, to, uh, you know, touching other people's property and stuff. I'd prefer it if people don't touch my stuff unless they ask. I mean, I know I recently made a comment about, you know, just uh, sweep my army off the table. I mean, that was a bit of a joke, um, to be honest. Like, just just be respectful of your opponent's stuff. That includes their books, their you know, their tape measures, all that stuff. Don't be touching other people's stuff um, unless they ask you to. If they ask you to move a model, just be respectful and stuff. Um, and again, and, and going on with this is is like follow the spirit of the rules. Um, now, of course, like the, we can't solve the raw versus rye debate here. No, I don't think it'll ever be fully resolved because it's it, it, it's like. Um, the, the, the United States Constitution, right? There are literally people who go to law school to become constitutional law, uh, lawyers, um, and and we still have constitutional crises and disagreements. And any set of rules is the same. I mean, the Constitution, regardless of your thoughts and my thoughts on the United States, the Constitution is one of the uh, best pieces of uh, like written law for the most part. I mean, obviously, it's got some incredibly bad things that are dated, you know, um, regarding some people being less than one whole person and, and things like that. But as a, as a, as a legal thing, I, I think it's a really good document. In the same way, you know, <laughs> ninth edition rules are, are really good. They are really good, but there are, there are always going to be opportunities where things don't fit. So play with the spirit of the game. You know, we know right now that through multiple FAQs, GW has decided that when you deep strike, you have a nine inch charge, regardless of the, the hull of the model you are charging, regardless of elevations and things like that. If someone unlocks and discovers some new way to make, you know, whether using trigonometry or, you know, astrophysics or, or you know, summoning demons from the warp to, to, to change uh, real time, uh, time space, space time um regardless of what happens we know the spirit of the game is that you deep strike in you have a nine inch charge now of course there are obvious break uh ways to break that rule violent urgency add one to your roll when you make a charge so you get an eight inch charge that you know that's fine but through mechanics and jankiness and shenanigans you know like with angles and stuff we know it's nine inches okay that's the spirit of the rule. That's the spirit of the game. Don't be the person that finds the way to break that if there is any more remaining, okay? Um, 
And the next kind of bit of this is assist your opponent with um, obvious mistakes, right? Um, it's, it's kind of a difficult one. It's certainly in a tournament or a competitive setting. But um, like something that, that often happens, like and I'm terrible with certain parts of my rules. I always forget scramblers and my prayers and stuff like that, right? But, um, you know, if your opponent um, has, you know, they've, they've cast a five-up invuln aura like from a spell... And then you roll your melters against something, like against the uh, hormigons or guardsmen or something with a t-shirt, say basically. Um, and they just start removing us. And no, no, you, you got a five-up pinball. You know, they succeeded in that prayer or spell or whatever it was. They they deserve to use it, and and it's easy in a competitive setting to forget little things like that. If they have paid the resource to have something or intentionally moved a model in, uh, or a unit into a, like, a bizarre place to do to retrieve to deploy scramblers retrieve octaria state or whatever the hell it is and they obviously didn't they moved you know a unit that could have shot otherwise and they didn't shoot with it you know you give them that but this margin does decrease the higher the table you're on okay uh, i don't know how to draw that line myself uh, because i would generally allow that even on like a top table um but i don't expect everyone to be that generous um or that, that, that's kind of like self-serving there i'm sorry um I, I wouldn't expect an opponent to give me that i wouldn't feel bad if my opponent said no sorry you didn't declare it in your movement phase the rule is clear and you can't feel bad if you're denied but in the interest of being sporting if the intent was obvious spirit of the game right um so generally just be a good sport like the, and it leads into the next thing because like i said at the beginning the main point the main reason we play this is to have fun and every game you walk away from you should have you should walk away number one having had fun yourself and number two having uh, having the certainty that you did your best to ensure your opponent had fun um and there's a lot of little things you can do for that. Compliment your your opponent's army if it's you know really nicely painted, or even if it's you know okay painted. Just, oh wow, I really like the the contrasting colours you got on that model, or, or something. Mate, just make a nice comment, or um, you know if they bring a random weird esoteric unit or so. Well, you know that that's a cool. What, what's that? I've you know I don't not familiar with that. Oh okay, I read about it in that book. Just have a little bit of banner in you know in the in the pre-game when you're kind of like going over your list and stuff create a bridge some common ground if it's someone you don't know right um just involve them open offer that olive branch or that hand or whatever you know establish that you you're a nerd too and you're here to have some fun to to roll some dice and you know blow some stuff up and chop some heads off and whatnot right um but when as it, when it comes to banter and telling jokes or you know it, anecdotes and experiences and stuff do it on your own time on your turn okay the last thing one of the worst things is if your opponent is talking to you whilst it's your turn at a tournament is certainly if, if you're playing in your garage with some mates beer and pretzels and stuff whatever if you're at a tournament or you know you you organize to have a competitive practice game with someone you don't know you're testing out chess clocks. I don't know. The last thing you want is an opponent who's who's talking to you during your turn, right? And the last thing your opponent wants is you talking to them during their turn. On your turn, when it's your when you're moving your models or rolling your shooting dice, within reason, tell jokes, you know, tell stories, talk about your your last game, something like that. That's totally fine because it's your time you're wasting, right? Um Another thing you can do, certainly in your like local gaming store or something like that, um, if it's a person you've not seen before, you don't know, or you, you know maybe you're the new person, you open a conversation like, "Hey, you know, is this your first time playing here, or do you know, have, have you played much 40k? Do you get many games in around here?" Kind of open that, you know, invitation that you know you you haven't got a promise to play them again because they might turn out to be a complete dick, but when you're establishing you know the game relationship that you're about to have uh, you're going to spend probably two maybe three hours with this person find out you know if it, you know they, i just moved to town you know a month ago and i figured i'd come come and play in a little tournament around here and see what it's like so, oh well you know we meet up every friday night you know 
maybe you come along sometime. You ain't got to be best friends with them, but they might turn out to be, you know, they might become a friend. And if they don't, well, you know, no harm, no foul, right? You didn't lose nothing. Um, but yeah, it's like, so be friendly and, and, and ensure your opponent, you're contributing to your opponent and join the game. You know, if, if you need to make sound effects, do it. If it, You know, just, just make sure the fun is not at their expense. And it's something you both... And you know what? If your opponent is someone like, I'm sorry, I, I like to play, treat this game very seriously and play in silence, respect that as well. Okay? Some people like that. You know, that's fine. God. The last thing. Don't sit there on your phone um, whilst they're moving. It's the rudest fucking thing in the world. Um, it really is. If you're in a social environment... Um, like, you, I, I don't mean, like, don't check your rules or something. That, that's fine. But don't sit there on Facebook or Instagram or something. Right? No. You 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 have committed to engage in a game for two to three hours, most likely. Um, give your attention to the table, to your opponent. You know, stuff like that. Um, so, the last kind of... Well, not really the last topic, but almost the last topic is, um, is about giving your best game. I'm a strong advocate for you should always play your best. Always give 100%. Go hard, right? There are a few exceptions to this. Like, if you're, if you're literally teaching someone or, you know, someone's, you know, first half dozen games ever or even dozen games, whatever, yeah, you you, you pull some punches, right? I am talking about um, opponents who have, 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 have gone over that kind of 10 games in ninth level, right? Or, or maybe a little bit more, depending on their personal competency. Um if your opponent knows their rules and and isn't constantly reading through the codex, at that point you can assume they are a worthy opponent, right? Do not pull your punches. I'm not saying play, you know, win at all costs or, or be cheesy or, or whatever. Use your tactics. You know, try point their models. Abuse the charge. I say abuse. Use the charge rule to just to go around screen adequately deep screen them out with deep uh, from deep striking and you are playing a game to win it is a it is in anything but the most fluffy narrative games no matter if even in them you are playing to win the game you may have a sort of undercurrent of telling a story at any level of the game you're, you're telling a bit of a story but the the higher up you go competitively of course that becomes less of a thing but you are trying to win, and the last... Everything's the last thing I want, apparently. But the last thing I want is an opponent who, after, if, if I win, says, Oh, well, you did really well. I mean, I was only, only fighting with my right hand tied behind my back and, you know, just using my left. Like, you don't want that. I mean, no. You, you want to know you beat your opponent on their best day using their best army and things like that. Um, or, you know, at least giving their best shot. Um, and you should do the same because if your opponent wins, you can say, you know what, I played my guts out and you still kicked my ass, well done to you. Um, because, again, it comes down to making sure both you and your opponent feel good at the end of the at the end of the end game. Like, I, I, I don't know. Um, apparently there's some people that don't want that, but uh, fuck them. Um, as, as I mentioned, obviously, if it's a new player or an inexperienced player, it's actually, okay. I, I think, certainly okay to let them win. Um, the reason I say that, you know, I'm not a psychologist or um, a qualified doctor or anything like that. I mean, I've done done some, you know, I took an A-level in psychology and stuff and studied it when I was uh, doing my degree for philosophy. Um, and I'm reasonably well-read and, you know, suitably educated, I guess. And... Um, Something that happens when you experience things is, you know, especially repetitively, your your brain, you know, applies the um, particular hormones that you release, like your endorphins and stuff. So if, if you keep doing something that feels good, you want to do it more. If you do something and it feels bad a few times, you don't want to do it. Um, I don't want to get punched in the face. It's happened a few times. And uh, it doesn't feel good. Um, there are things that I've done that felt good, and I like doing them a lot. Um, 40k, I mean, I like winning. But once you've kind of hit, you know, like, I, I'm not a veteran by any means, but once you've played a few games, you um, 
that balances out and it for me it's it's the competitiveness of a game win or lose that i get the rush from right having fun is a part of that for a new player who hasn't established those you know, like neural pathways or, or whatever the technical scientific terms for this are how, you know has only played two or three games or maybe it's their first game be part of something that contributes to them having a positive experience right let them have a win a couple of wins because then you're, you're they are literally building a, a memory that is you know fizzy uh, physiologically no neurologically um assigned to a good response they will like warhammer give them 10 games you know play let them play other opponents come back and then bring your best game and if you stomp them hopefully by then they've you know they've got a balance of wins and losses and they're like oh wow that, that uh, your new army oh what the fuck's going on with my beard um scraggly as hell sorry um you know, you, you your new army really kicks ass. Yeah, you know, a lot. I've, I've put in a lot of work. You know, whatever. I mean, we just want people to enjoy the game. Um, okay, so like the this is the last topic now. So it's about feels bads, right? Feel bad moments in the game. Um, and this is don't be the reason your opponent feels bad. Um, there's a lot. There's hundreds of things that can do this. Um, and I, I just want to go over a few so ones that particularly piss me off. Um, never blame the dice. Never blame the dice um, if you're losing. Um, it's when you blame the dice, you are taking away the agency of your opponent. You are saying you are not doing anything that is contributing to my defeat or my my you know my army being killed. It is simply random chance. I would be beating you if not for random luck on your part. No, that's that's the most disrespectful fucking thing ever. I don't care who you are. Uh, I mean, I've had bad rolls, but I've had good rolls. The dice balance out. Now, TTS is slightly different because there are known glitches with it repeating dice, right? That's literally, you know, a problem. That can be actually fairly simply resolved. You, you know, you just delete your dice pull dice from a different bag if your table dice like I, I i know this sounds weird i i test my dice right i, I when i bought my world it is just, i rolled them i rolled them like you know I, I rolled 10 of them the ones and twos i picked out and i re-rolled them a few times and if anything kept like rolling one like this didn't amount to anything but i just want to make sure then i took the fives and sixes and i rolled them any fives and sixes i pulled out rolled them again any fives and sixes rolled them again like i think i maybe maybe got a couple of three in a rows um threes and fours did the same thing like i didn't find any bad dice so i know my entire set of dice that i use in a game will literally roll anything fairly consistently because you it is possible to get a, a, a janky dice it, it, it happens but like don't blame the dice you you can mitigate your dice being bad by literally testing them and in TTS you can delete them. the dice are not the reason you lose they may contribute to a critical moment which causes you to lose yes but the best players in 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 40k right the bet like the top players probably like the the top 500 in fact are players that know to use the rules of whatever codex they're playing to mitigate dice they've got tactics and strategies and and potentially you know very efficient units and stuff but everything in their list is often built around well re-rolls was very big in eighth but it's still a common thing um modifying you know pluses or reducing your opponent's dice roll um being able to swap out dice just all these things things where you can control the dice or boost your efficiency with the dice the best lists played by the best players are absolutely maximizing those kinds of things now yes they have amazing skill and board uh, knowledge and, and things like that and experience i am not saying it's simply a case of maximizing dice efficiency it's probably the least and easiest thing we can do when writing a list quite frankly but it's certainly a part of it so don't blame the dice if, if you feel that the dice are, 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 are you know, uh, sucking for you, uh, write a better list. 
that, that's it. it. Yeah, you you can you have to do what you can to mitigate that and don't res disrespect your opponent. Um, the next thing, don't don't explain to your opponent. Don't tell your opponent their rules. Um, there, there's a bit twofold here. Again, like I said earlier, if your opponent you know cast a five up in bowl and they're forgetting it, remind them they did it for a reason. But don't don't say, oh, uh, okay, so you charged me, so you have uh, 17 attacks, right? They know what they're fucking doing. They know what they're about. Let, let them do that. Let them tell you their rules. Now, if if this, okay, so I've got a sergeant with a chainsword who's got one, two, three attacks, then three marines with one. What's, what's three plus? Okay, like, okay, look, I'm going to help you out. You've got six attacks in this case, or, or whatever it's going to be, right? You know, di like, don't be disrespectful, because I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's a very extreme case. But if someone is, is, you know, struggling, they maybe shouldn't be at the tournament, you're probably going to win. So just don't be a dick. But um, don't, if, if someone is playing their army, don't tell them what, what their stuff is. Um, now maybe if you're in like the you know the final 30 minutes of a timed game or something, uh, so, okay. So I know you've got 20 attacks there. I've got my dice ready. Go ahead, roll. Okay, you know speed things up. But that, that's a niche circumstance, right? Just don't, don't explain your opponent's army to them. That's that's disrespectful. Um, and don't rule versus right. Um, try and avoid that at all costs. It will come up. Okay, it's going to come up eventually. Not every game. GW is getting a lot better about that with you know more frequent FAQs and stuff, but. If you know the intent of a rule, follow the intent. If your opponent is, you know, playing raw, don't be disrespectful. Say, so, okay, so that's your opinion. This is my opinion. You know, here's the rules that say that. Um, do, do you still disagree? Okay, let's ask the TO. Or, or follow the GW, you know, um, hierarchy of things to do that ends up with a four-up roll-up. That may not always be appropriate um, in, a, in a tournament, though. Um, if it's a big moment for something simple like um, I played a game at, at, uh, last weekend and um, we couldn't remember what the the mission pack uh, what particular whether it said a particular piece of terrain had like a uh, light cover I, I don't it was saying else but we'll say light cover we couldn't remember so it's like all right, on a four up it's got light cover and I think it ended up being a five or a six and so that piece of terrain had a four up you know, that was fucking easy to resolve. Like, I think my I think my opponent said thought it did, and I thought it didn't. But I don't care because we established straight. Okay, it's got light cover. Now I deploy, knowing that these things have light cover. I will accommodate for that. No hard feelings. No big deal. It, it really didn't matter. Um, so yeah. So just you know, resolve things amicably where possible. Um, and going off of that, allow take backs. Again, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but allow a little bit of take backs. Um, you know, if it's, it's round three, um, your opponent's round three, and they placed a squad of Terminators on the side of the board, like as they, they, they say, okay, so I'm putting my, I'm going to put my Terminators here because I know that you've you've left a gap for them, but I've got to do all my other movements because Deep Strike is at the end of the movement phase. They do all their movements, you know, maybe something happens, they get distracted. You know, you ask them a question or something, and then they go on and they do their psychic phase, and nothing happens. And then they shoot some bolt guns on the other side of the field, and then they look and they're like, "Oh my god, I forgot my Terminators. They're destroyed." Fuck off, they destroyed. Put them on the fucking board. I knew what you was doing. I I didn't notice it, you know, because I'm not paying attention to that. That is your problem. But as long as the game state hasn't advanced significantly, of course you throw them on the bloody table. You know. That the round three destruct like if they play through to the end of the turn, like if you notice, I, I feel that you should tell them, like during their movement, if if they start say, okay, I'm going to cast my first psychic power. Hey mate, you forgot your terminators. That's you should do that. If you, if you don't do that, you're an asshole. I'm sorry. I don't care if you're at the top table. If you know it and you you know allow it to carry on, you're a dick. Um, fight me. Um, but, you know, it is not your responsibility to, to watch for your opponent for getting things. However, if the game state has not changed in such a way that that would dramatically alter things, like I said, they failed their psychic powers, and, um, you know, they've just fired some insignificant bolt guns somewhere. Of course. Now, if it gets to the, you know, maybe like the charge phase, 
or certainly the fight phase. In fact, yeah, I, w I would say for something like that, like the fight phase, they've sacrificed their shooting, which that's their problem. Um, but if they, if it was like at that point, it's like, oh man, I'm meant to bring these Terminators in because I was going to shoot that, the charge that unit that I failed to kill when I shot. You, you know, we d at that point we don't know what your train of uh, your your plays would be, right? I would say you can bring them on maybe on your board edge or something like that. I would still accommodate, but I would say, you know, the game state has changed at this point. I don't want you to lose your models, but I don't want them to interfere with that. Like, there there's a rule for a reason. Um, so I think that would be a reasonable um, compromise. Keep your models, but they need to go somewhere where they're not going to interact with this turn. And, you know, I, I think that's reasonable. Um, but yes, allow take backs or, or allow, you know, things that are, you know, slightly out of sequence. It's like your shooting phase. Oh, I forgot to do my deploy scramblers. No, you didn't. You did it. Okay. Um, I think that I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um, now, of course, things like this do become, as I mentioned earlier, less acceptable on higher tables. You know, you, you get to like the, you know, on the second day of a GT and, you you know, you're three and oh four and oh and you're going into the final kind of like rounds and you've got a chance of top eight or something yeah you it becomes a narrower opportunity for for these sort of things but you're going to hopefully be facing opponents that will be making less and less mistakes um just don't be you you, you don't want to be the person that's you know on a stream and uh you're just like okay so you're you'll want to deep strike that unit there do you Okay, so you're deep striking that unit there. That I'll, I'll help you put them down. That yeah, yeah, you've got room there. That's fine. You're outside of nine inches. Okay, your movement phase is over. No, you cannot move the other half of your army. You do not want to be that person. No, that's no. You 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 can say um, are you deep striking? Because you know that's the last thing you do. Are you sure you didn't want to move that tank or or whatever? Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm sorry. Thank you. Because you want to beat your opponent at their best. It's easy to forget certain things. And, you know, like, sequencing sometimes is insignificant. Like, sometimes if you're deep straight striking your Terminators in your backfield because you, you know, you want them to sit and hug an objective or, or whatever, right? It's, it's not really affecting much. It's fine. Um, but, yeah, so, I, like, basically this all can be summed up with um, don't be a dick comment, right? Um, it's, it's like the golden rule of life. Like, just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's always been a thing. Um it's a biblical thing it's it's a social contract thing it's a it's whatever right um treat people as you want to be treated um and i hope you want to be treated fairly and with respect and with dignity and um as though you are a competent opponent right i want my opponents to assume i can bring a good game regardless of if i can or not and i want i want every person i ever play to to treat me as though I can beat them and therefore they must beat me that that is like honorable combat or something right that's what I want and I I don't give anything less than than my best now if we're playing a fluffy game or a friendly game of course I'm going to do things within the confines of the game which are fun or fluffy but I will still play what I believe is the best I can play um, I will use stratagems at appropriate times to maximise efficiency. Things like that, right? Um, it's too intricate to, to, to specify everything you should or shouldn't do, in my opinion. Um, but it's common sense. Um, but the, the, the big things are, know your rules. Know your army rules, right? Don't waste your opponent's time as much as possible. Respect your opponent's personal space and, and property um, don't blame the dice don't blame the dice allow take backs with it within reason um, don't be afraid to stand up for yourself as well if your opponent is being a bad opponent um, but that that's something that's that's very well covered which is why I haven't really touched on it here um, and I, I may talk about having some confidence um, or building confidence at the table uh, for another video I think um, like pr practical things you can literally do um, because it, confidence is hard to have especially as a newer player or 
you know, someone that isn't a 280 pound bald white guy, you know, you, th there might be some things where you feel a little bit out of place or in a, you know, you, you're not one of the, the regulars or something like that. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, all right, so thanks for listening. Um, do want to quickly remind, if you are watching this and it's still late June, possibly early July, Bellacor is still up for grabs. Um, the amazingly painted Bellacor by uh, Neil, the paintsmith, paintsmith armory, um, going to be closing that down. I'm probably going to extend it a week or so, I think, because I really want to raise a little bit more money. Um, but all you got to do is donate $5 to save the children. The link will be below in the description. There's a tilt fire link. It's just an online way that allows me to track um, emails of people who have donated so I can pick a winner. Um, but yeah, that'd be great. All you got to do is donate $5 um, and you are automatically entered into winning that and it will be shipped to you at no expense. Um, you know, a commission painted Bellacor. I mean, it's was like $140 to buy it and I God knows how much you sh Neil should charge for the paint job um, I'm going to release the he sent me a secret or, or a updated picture uh, yesterday so I'm going to release that probably tomorrow a little bit of a you know, teaser um, but yeah definitely um, would appreciate you looking into that and um, as ever stay healthy stay safe and kill me and burn